let's talk about uh, DC power here before we move on to what we normally deal with. So the DC power, that is in those are in convenience portable type items, cell phones, laptops, your automobile as well, because you can't plug that in and, and drive very far with an extension cord plugged into your car. And that power is usually provided by batteries. And DC stands for direct current. That means the current flows in only one direction. And it's really good for mobile devices and when the power source is very close to what's being used. Now, if you took, hooked up a battery and put, and, and put on a mile of wire, it's not, your flashlight probably will not even light because DC power doesn't transmit very well over, over long distances and, and wire, long wiring distances. AC power does. AC stands for alternating current. That means the current that uh, we talked about in the power distribution and generation module changes direction every 60 seconds. And so it flows in one direction and then it flows in the other direction, back and forth, back and forth like that continuously. Now, in the HVAC equipment, we we use about 90% of the time or more alternating current and it's always supplied to the equipment. Now when you're talking about high efficiency equipment with variable speed drives, variable speed pumps, variable speed compressors, uh, that takes that AC current, runs it through a an inverter board which has rectifiers on it and it converts that AC power back down into DC power that's used by those DC type motors. Okay, so do you remember this from the earlier lesson? We have our magnets, and these are in our huge hydroelectric power plants. Water's flowing through the dam. It's turning the turbines, which turns huge coils of wires inside of a magnetic field. And whenever these, whenever wires cut through and coils of wires cut through mag, a magnetic field, it induces or creates a current that flows through those wires. So if this, were, if we were spinning this around at about this pace right here, the current would be flowing in one direction and then back in another direction at about, at that same pace. And we would see that meter move over in this direction and back and forth as it's moved, as it is, uh, the current changes direction. All right, so remember whenever you cut wires through a magnetic field or a magnetic field is moved across electric coils of uh, wire, it induces electric current. All right, so let's take a look a little bit more detail. All right, so we've taken the ammeter out of the out of the circuit here, and now we have put in an iron core. So this is just a piece of iron, and we've take, taken our wires and wrapped it around this iron core, and we've, we we have removed the ammeter. So as we rotate these coils of wires through the magnetic lines of force, it induces current through these wires. And whenever you start to coil up wires around an iron core, it creates a magnet. So now we've taken th and this magnetic, these magnetic lines of force used it to create electrical current that flows through these wires back to this coil of wire around an iron core and as it flows through there we have we are now inducing a magnetic field over here around this iron core so what we've done up here we have reversed down here and this is the principle of just about every motor and device that we have in HVAC equipment. Now in this in this diagram we're very close together here. We're just inches away from each other. But in reality this is our hydroelectric dam that is turning coils of wire through our magnetic field. It goes through the transmission lines miles and miles and miles comes in as electric current and then we take this electric current and put it into a motor which is basically a coil of wires around an iron core to turn the motor. So now we've taken the physical turning of the hydroelectric turbines here and 
created alternating current and now we've turned it back into a magnetic field and in our, in our motor and other devices we can turn those motors and that is the basis of every nearly every device that we have in our HVAC equipment is we use induction and we use magnetic fields created by that induction to to turn our motors and activate our our devices and then after this video I'm going to post a very very old military video that's I found on YouTube that is probably one of the best explanations of induction that I found so so if this is just not quite clear if you watch that that'll clear it up I just don't have the the animation tools to do it so that'll make it much more clear all right so let's look at one more time we talked about AC current and our rotating coils of wire through the magnetic field so as these wires are in this position right here and and they are they are not cutting the lines of force they're in line with the lines of force there is zero induced voltage as this these coils of wire start to move through these lines of force it's the volt the current starts to increase until it it is completely cutting those lines of force at a 90 degree angle and that is your highest point of current flow as it rotates down through and comes again to the where it is perpendicular here we're back down to zero and then as we rotate the other half of that coil through it creates a negative electron flow so what happens is with your AC current it's flowing in one direction here peaks out goes down to zero and then it flows in the opposite direction so if it were in a wire this would be the current would be flowing this way we'd be at zero right here and then down here the current flows in the opposite direction and that is how we do that and we do that uh, six we have one complete cycle 60 times per second here in the US that's 60 Hertz okay that's the end of the lesson make sure you watch the uh, the black and white video that follows this one that will further explain induction with a little bit of animation that really makes sense